and it's all good. Uh, we're live on uh, Facebook. Let me fix this so we can have our introduction. I feel like we might as well dive into it since we're here, but it's not right uh, unless we do our introduction. Um, as you guys dive in uh, the show tonight, let me know who you are and where you're from. Um, and we're going to have some fun. We're going to be talking about the problem with savings um, or building the savings. And, you know, a lot of great things are going to come out of this conversation tonight. So, where is it? It's not live on YouTube yet. It's not live? It should be. Facebook, yeah, YouTube. Yeah, so we're waiting for people to get up in here. Um, and Dope Chaser TV um, is actually about to start. You can't solve your financial problems with the same kind of thinking that caused them. These words will change your reality because poverty can't survive in a Dope Chaser's mentality. The Beat Majors. So to all my dough chasers, it's time to get this party started now. now. I like it. With your host, Jason White. Jason White. Jason White. Jason White. Jason White. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, dough chasers? This is Jason White. I'm CEO and founder of Witness Riches. Uh, we help people improve their finances and boost their credit scores. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the problem with saving. Um, there are particular issues that none of you probably have really thought about. Um, and it's very important for you to have this understanding so that you can begin to build uh, the financial future that you want instead of someone else's future. Um, and what I want to do is I want to make sure that I know who I'm talking to. So as you join me today, let me know who you are and where you're from. Um, and we're going to be talking about the problem with savings. Um, so I myself um, am uh, when I started, you know, managing my finances better uh, a few years ago, uh, my wife and I, we what we really focused on is understanding what is important to us. And a lot of times, people when they are, you know, trying to uh, implement a plan for the finances, what they're doing is they're following the same strategy that everybody else is following. Um, and the thing that I've understand it, understood is, you know, finances are personal, meaning that. It should be um, basically revolving around what's important to you. And a lot of times what people end up doing is they do what everyone else is doing and they end up not getting the results that they want from their money. Um, and one of those things that a lot of people focus on, um, and I think they go about the wrong way, is saving money. Okay. My whole thing about saving money is, you know, you need to secure your financial foundation, meaning that. God forbid if something were to happen to you, you need to be able to depend on yourself uh, wholeheartedly, right? And you basically need to focus on building self-sufficiency. However, once you have that safety net, should you continue to build that, um, should you begin to you know, focus on building that saving account? And in my, in my opinion, I don't think so, okay? I believe that you know, building a saving account past, you know, a certain amount, whatever, you know, your comfort level is, building it past that is unnecessary if the, your intentions are not correct, okay? So, typically, the, the average person is, you know, Jason, I want to build a strong emergency fund, right? And the thing is that they don't do is they don't define what a strong emergency fund looks like. And, uh, you know, in my personal life, a strong emergency fund, is ten thousand dollars. However, I'm married, so I have to consider you know a strong emergency fund from my wife's pers uh, perspective. And to her, a strong emergency fund is twenty thousand dollars. So when we are managing our finances, if we run across an emergency, um, if we are planning a vacation or we're planning a big purchase, if we were to use money out in our uh, emergency fund, basically our our focus doesn't change until that safety net is affected, okay? And once it's affected, then we focus all of our attention 
on getting our safety net back to where it is. And then we begin to focus our money on different areas of our lives. Okay. So $20,000 is our level. Um, and then once we reach that level, I begin to put that money in different places. You know, instead of me continuing to put that money in my saving account, I begin to focus on different areas of my life that I want to see an improvement. And a lot of times um, people do not understand that building a savings past your comfort level is unnecessary. Jason, why do you say that? Well, um, do you know uh, the negatives of a saving account and a credit card? It's pretty much the same thing. Keeping a balance in your saving account and, and on your credit card will be the same negative impact. And, and what I mean by that is one is charged you uh, compounding interest. OK, you're losing money. And then with your bank account, you're losing money because of inflation. All right. Right now. Uh, let me look this up. Let's see what the inflation rate is right now. So typically, the inflation, um, without me reading all this information, um, it's about, what, 3%? Give or take 3%, right? So a dollar saved today, one year from now, is not worth a dollar anymore. It's worth 97 cents. So you're basically losing money the longer you keep money inside of your saving account. So with you having money in your saving account and you know, a balance on your credit card, you're both, you know, either way you're losing money. And what you want to do is you want to be more strategic with your approach when it comes to saving. Okay. You have your emergency fund. And then once you reach that emergency fund, all of the money that you have should be, um, you know, transferred somewhere else. And we're going to talk about that as we move forward. But before I get into that, let me know who you are, where you're from. Um, and you know, I'd like to know who I'm talking to. Okay, yeah, so we got people on YouTube, and unfortunately, I'm not on that page right now, so let me fix that. Got Mike McCray. All right, so we got uh, Will Peterson from Kansas, Mike McRae uh, from Georgia, uh, Inger from North Carolina, Erica from North Carolina, Keith from Virginia, stand up. <laughs> we got... Uh, Carl Mixon from Florida. Uh, let me see. Carla Terrell's Mixon. in the house. So Carla Mixon. Uh, excuse me. Carla Mixon. I apologize. Um, we got Corey Clark. What's up? He's in the house. Uh, let me see. Stephanie. Uh, what's up, Jason? I heard that there was a new client portal coming. Uh, do you know when it's coming? I'm like a week overdue for my letters. Uh, Stephanie, we can look into that for you. Um, if you can, send me an email to jason at witnessriches.com, um, and I will look into that personally for you and figure out what's going on with that. Uh, but once you uh, receive that update, uh, the new portal, you know, you should you should receive that within a week. So I'll, I'll look into that for you. Uh, but uh, Corey Oakland, uh, IG, we got uh, Mastermind from New Orleans. How you doing? Basically, we got a lot of people here. <laughs> and I appreciate you all joining me this evening. Uh, let me see. We got Alonz B. Great info. I appreciate that. So I'm going to uh, you know, shout you all out as you get here. But right now, we're talking about the problem with savings. And the biggest problem with savings is, like a credit card, you're losing money. Okay? And a lot of people have a savings mentality um, when uh, they're basically, instead of investing in themselves, or investing in other things that's going to produce an additional income for themselves, they are saving their money. And ultimately, by you uh, putting money into your saving account without you actually having a strategy or you know creating an, an additional uh, income stream for yourself, you're losing money due to inflation. All right. And let's talk about this. Inflation is basically uh, depreciation of money, right? Over time, money in America is not as valuable, you know, at, in the future, right? Which sucks because, you know, we're working our butts off for something that depreciates, which is interesting. Um, however, you know, it's a way of life. And because it depreciates, 
I feel that we need to create um, additional income streams to kind of counter that depreciation. And a lot of times people will focus on saving their money because they feel like that's the best thing that they can do for themselves. When ultimately that strategy alone will not create, um, you know, an abundance for you. You're actually losing money from that strategy alone. And I want you all to think more uh, strategically and more deeply when it comes to your finances and your approach with money so that you can begin to get better results. Okay. So the first stage of you um, building your saving account, I feel that you need to have some kind of number. Okay. You need to have a number that will give you peace of mind. God forbid if something were to happen, you know that you have this amount of money set aside where you can take care of your expenses. A lot of people will recommend three to six months of income. You know, me personally, I'm cool with 10 G's sitting in the bank. My wife, for her to feel comfortable, you know, she wants to see 20,000 sitting in the bank. So, hey, let's make that happen. You know, uh, happy spouse, happy house. <laughs> Anyway, um, so we focus on that. And then once we reach that level, instead of me continue to save money, I know that if I continue to save money without some true or uh, actual approach for me to make more money, I'm ultimately losing you know, up to 3% in inflation. That's stupid. So instead of me putting more money in my saving account, my approach is how can I uh, create additional revenue streams. Okay. I have a business, my business, we have a, uh, you know, a profit margin, right? And if I want to continue to increase that profit margin, it's a great idea for me to invest in my business, right? So now that we have this safety net, what I do is I personally invest in the business and that allows me to grow my business, which, you know, helps me, uh, you know, increase the profit. But the thing is, you know, me, making this money, you earning this money to invest it in something that's going to cause you to lose money is hustling backwards. And you work your ass off not to hustle backwards. You work your ass off to build a better life for your family, to grow and to you know live a better life. And at the end of the day, with you and you know saving your money without having some other approach than having a peace of mind, it's hustling backwards. And what I would recommend that you do is have some some level of uh, understanding where you know that I have this peace of mind pot, right? And once that pot is filled, money, extra money that you have, instead of putting it in your saving account, maybe you invest in starting a business. Maybe you invest in your 401k. Maybe you invest in a Roth IRA. Maybe you find some other investment tool that's actually going to make you money instead of take your money. Let me look at the comments. We got Whitney Fox from uh, North Carolina. Alons B from Canada. What's up? How you doing? Hey. We got uh, Jim from New Jersey. Uh, let me see. We got St. Louis in the house. What's up, John? CC Jackson, she says the first time here. Welcome to Don't Chase uh, TV. We really appreciate that. Uh, we got uh, Cornell from North Carolina, uh, Mr. Alexander 19. Uh, tell him about that purchasing power. Oh, yeah, we're getting into it. Um, Lonnie Williams from uh, Ohio, stand up uh, on IG. Uh, I like what you're doing. Cash May Brand. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, we got any uh, interaction on Facebook? Yes, we do. And we got interaction on Facebook today? <laughs> That's dope. Usually, you know, Facebook plays us. You know, they play us with the uh, interaction. We got Detroit right now. Detroit in the house. Who is that? Lamar Matthews. Lamar Matthews. I appreciate you, man. We got Georgia right now. Georgia in the house. Hakeem. Hakeem? Yep. What's up? Okay, so... We're talking about your saving account costing you money, right? And a lot of people, when they look at their saving account, they really don't look at it, you know, this way. Um, but ultimately, you know, it's costing you because of inflation. Um, and what you want to do, in my opinion, is you need to focus more on creating additional uh, revenue streams or income uh, to counter that inflation, um, so that you can continue to level up. Uh, where is my board?
Okay. I got something for you. Uh oh. He brought up the whiteboard. So IG, I apologize. Um, the information that you are going to see will be backwards. All right, they can still see. Uh, where is my marker? All right. So there's something called opportunity cost. Can you hear me? Let me get a one if you can hear me. There's something called opportunity cost. Okay, opportunity cost is what you are giving up for something else. Okay, and in this instance, we're talking about a saving account that is making you 1% each year. Okay, so if you have $1,000 that you have in that saving account, in a year, it's going to make you. Ten dollars. All right. So that's the game. However, instead of you continue to invest more money inside of that saving account, because ultimately three percent inflation, that's going to cost you. Uh, what is that? Three percent. Uh, is my math right? So you have $1,000, you invest it, you make $10 over a year. So you have $1,000, $10 in a year. However, because of inflation, that $1,000 is only worth 980 bucks. Okay? So that's the opportunity. However, instead of you continue to invest in the saving account, what if you got a Roth IRA? A Roth IRA is a uh, after-tax vehicle, okay? So the money is already taxed for one, and when you begin to take an income from it, they're not going to tax you again, okay? They can't double tax it. Let's say that that's making you 6%, okay? So that means that 1,000 will turn to, you know, 60, so now you made 1060 and then you, you, know, you lose the money because of inflation and all that good stuff, but you have a gain. So the opportunity cost is I continue to invest in my saving account, but I lose out on the potential of the gain that I can have with the Roth IRA. So what you want to do is you want to look at the You want to look at the gain that you're going to have. I'm all over the place. You want to look at the pros and the cons of your investments, right? And if your investment, if you're losing money compared to what you could be making, basically the opportunity is I can continue to save money, but the cost is I'm losing out on the 6% gain that I can have. And those people who are winning actually make better decisions based off of the pros and cons of the, the tools that they're looking to use. So when you are looking at, you know, saving in the future, I would definitely recommend that you look at to different, you look at different investment tools, okay, investment vehicles, um, you can start a business, you can invest in the market, 401k, okay, Roth IRA, um, you can... Uh, invest in debt. You can invest. There's a lot of things that you can invest in, but you want to really focus on creating additional revenue streams, income streams, so that you can counter inflation and continue to level up. Uh, Keith Baylor asks, which is best, 401k or Roth IRA money mar uh, market account that pays 35%? Um, so I'm not going to really tell you, you know, what's the best. Um, but I can give you some information, okay? A 401k is money that is not taxed. So basically with the 401k, you use the money that uh, you are making from your job. They transfer, you know, whatever the percentages that you want to invest 
into the 401k and it earns a percentage, right? The thing is, when you begin to receive an income from that, it's going to be uh, taxed at future tax brackets, okay? And, you know, in the area, the time frame that we're living now, tax brackets are low. And where do you think they're going to go in the future? They're going to go, they're going to go up, right? Taxes will, <clears throat> excuse me, taxes are going to increase ultimately in the future. So with me, I will personally recommend that you maximize the Roth IRA, okay? Get taxed now. Maximize that Roth IRA so in the future you're not being taxed at a higher tax bracket, okay? Um, and also take advantage of the free money that's on the table if your employer matches. If they match up to 2%, take advantage of that 2%. That's money on the table that you can get it for free. Uh, anyway, we're, we're talking about, you know, the problem of savings. Um, you know, I really feel like you need to have a peace of mind pot, okay? How much money do you need to get by? God forbid you were to lose your income. Is it going to take you three months to, to find a new job? Is it going to take you six months to find a new job? What 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 level of comfort do you need, okay? Once you have that number and you hit that number, every dollar that you uh, are making after that, you know, if you're, if you're saving $300 a month towards that pot, stop saving that. Use that money to invest in yourself so that you can, uh, you know, create a, an additional revenue stream for yourself in the future. Okay. Once you reach that level of safety, stop it. Okay. Because you're, you're only investing in a tool that's depreciating. It's losing value. Now we want to place our money in vehicles that's going to produce a return so that we can profit and make more money. Because ob obtaining the doce of mentality is, you know, you gaining that financial advantage and using that money to actually live out your true purpose. And at the end of the day, if you're saving money to lose money, you're hustling backwards. And I wouldn't recommend it. What kind of feedback do we got? What, what kind of... Uh... Tiffany Parsons on Facebook had a question about Roth IRA. Right. What did she say? Um, Tiffany, I would uh, consult with uh, your bank. Um, they they offer Roth IRAs. Um, necessarily, it, it doesn't matter which company you go through. What matters is what uh, vehicles that they invest that money in once you have the Roth IRA. Okay, so that's the part you want to look in. Like, okay, I'm going to give you three hundred dollars a month, but to whom are you going to send this money to? And that's where you want to get strategic on uh, which uh, mutual funds they will invest that money into. This is an issue. Wreck-It Ralph on IG. If you can send me an email um, so I can look at your account, I can give you um, a better response because I have no idea um, who you are and what, what's going on with your account. Uh, but send me an email, we'll research your account, and then I'll give you a suggestion based off of that, okay? So my question to you is, how many of you have an emergency fund that you feel comfortable with, type one? How many of you have an emergency fund that you feel comfortable with, type one? Type two, if you don't have an emergency fund that you feel comfortable with. Because what's more important than you not building that emergency fund is actually developing the plan so that you can create one. Type one, if you have an emergency fund that you feel comfortable with. Type two, if you don't. Okay, we got some twos. Karrion said two, Mercury Graham said two, but I hope to have one ASAP. Let me see. Facebook, we got Dwayne, Inger, My Life is Taryn, Keith Baylor two, Nadine Henson two. Okay, so that means that we need to make that a priority, okay? Because your foundation is important. 
If you can't depend on yourself, who can you depend on? Really? And you need to make it a priority to build that emergency fund so that you can have that peace of mind. You deserve that much. A lot of people, I was meeting with the client earlier today. Um, and you know, I was telling her my story about when I used to work for New York Life, 100% commission job. And you know, if I didn't sell, I didn't eat. So when I did sell something, I finally earned a commission. Um, I wasn't the best salesman, by the way, but I finally earned a commission and I got this fat check. I'm like, you know what? We about to go to the mall and ball out on them. We about to go stunt. I was young and dumb. Anyway, we would come home, look at the mail, like, man, this water bill almost passed, dude. Dang, we two months behind on the rent. Man, my car note is, you know, two months behind. Like my priorities were off, right? And I was at the point where I was like, you know what? I'm working my butt off. I deserve to spend this money on myself and have a little fun. But you know what I really deserve more than that? Was some peace of mind. We all deserve a little peace of mind. So those of you who feel like, you know, you deserve to go spend your money on, you know, shiny things, you know, some shoes, a purse. What you really deserve is to come home to the lights on. You know, you deserve to not worry about your car being taken at night because they repossessed it or they repossessed it at work. I didn't even know they knew where I worked. They repossessed my Cadillac. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> you deserve that comfortability, right? So if you are someone where you're struggling with saving money um, and you're also struggling with making the right decisions with your money, think about this. You deserve peace of mind. Prioritize that and you know build that emergency fund up. There's too many people saying they don't have a solid emer emergency fund. And I'm not judging. I've been there. However, there's information out there that can help you learn how to build your emergency fund. For people who are a part of Transcend Financial Academy, they have access to this budget. I teach them how to budget the money and align their finances to the goals that they actually want to achieve. And sometimes you have to make a sacrifice. Otherwise, what you want will be the sacrifice. Aren't you tired of sacrificing what you want? How many of you are tired of sacrificing what you want? You deserve to be successful. You deserve to witness riches. You deserve to have abundance, evidence of abundant uh, wealth. Witness riches. That's what it's about. It's about understanding what it takes to be successful implementing those things within your financial plan and executing so that you can have evidence of abundant wealth. The thing is, a lot of us are, we have our priorities messed up, right? And instead of making that sacrifice for what we want, peace of mind, we're going to spend our money on temporary things that's going to give us a temporary feeling until we get home and look at those bills. You feel me? So, I want you all to do better. I want you all to get better results. That's why we created Don't Chase Your TV. Um, hopefully, this information has been helpful. Uh, for those of you who are interested in learning more about how you can get better results from your money when it comes to uh, you know saving, when it comes to paying your bills on time, when it comes to aligning your finances with your goals, and you know, creating a plan where you can make those goals a reality. There's a lot of you who have great ideas who are watching this broadcast, but you don't know how to make them a, rea a reality because your finances are messed up. And to be honest, once you get it, it's really not that hard. But what did Lauren, what did Lauren Hill say? It could, it could all be so simple, but you'd rather make it hard. Oh, yeah, we're dropping classic bombs today. So we have to learn how to set up our, fi our finances so that we can begin to build emergency funds, so that we can begin to pay our bills on time, so that we can begin to pay our debts down, 
and build this solid foundation, right? And once you do that and you just continue to be consistent with it, make those sacrifices that, so that you can win. Otherwise, what you want will be the sacrifice. And my friends, you all deserve to be successful. You all deserve to make those dreams of yours a reality. You all deserve to be true dough chasers. So I'm going to help you make that happen. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you all the ability to uh, enroll into Transcend Financial Academy, where I'm going to teach you how to get your money right. I'm going to teach you how to prepare your credit and teach you how to build your credit up to 200 points. I'm going to give you access to that for just $19.99 a month. Just $19.99 just a month, I'm going to teach you how to get your money right, repair your credit, and build your credit so that you can begin to get the results that you want from your money and obtain that dough chaser mentality, okay? So if you're interested, uh, YouTube, that information about that program is uh, provided in the comment area. Uh, Facebook, I'm going to upload that information in the comment area shortly. Anyone on IG who is interested in, uh, you know, enrolling into Transcend Financial Academy and getting the information that is shared in that program, send me a uh, direct message and I will provide you that information so that you can take advantage of that for $19.99 a month. OK, this is a month to month program. You can cancel at any time without incurring any additional, uh, you know, uh, any additional costs, any additional fees. Um, you can cancel the day before and you won't, you know, have any additional costs. But it's an awesome program, awesome information for those who take advantage of it. They do get results. All right. Um, so at the end of the day, I want you all to get better results from your money. I want you all to, you know, obtain the dough chasing mentality so that you can gain that financial advantage and use that money to live out your true purpose. Again, my name is Jason White. I want to thank you all for your time. I'll see you Thursday uh, on our next episode of Dough Chaser TV. In the meantime, make sure you like this video, share this video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook and follow me on Instagram. Stop playing. Stop playing. Let's get serious. All right, y'all have a good night. I'm out. Peace.